turn to Exodus 16 and Deuteronomy 8. Okay, so open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 16, Exodus 16, and then put a marker at Deuteronomy chapter 8, and we'll flip over there in just a moment. Exodus chapter 16, we're in a series called The Lord's Prayer, and we are going through Matthew 6, some call it the model prayer, but we're going through what's traditionally known as the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, when you pray, after this manner, pray in this manner. And we're actually memorizing the Lord's Prayer. The reason I didn't ask you to turn to Matthew 6 is because we're going to put it on the screen and we're going to say it all together, every campus at the same time, uh, and we're, do, we're memorizing it in the old King James. So let's put that scripture up and I want you to say it out loud with me, just loud enough where it just barely annoys your neighbor, all right? All right, so Matthew 6, verse 9, let's say it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You did great. This week we're talking about verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. If you remember, I'm asking you to memorize one phrase a week. So we've already memorized our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Last week we memorized thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This week, give us this day our daily bread. Only seven words. But these seven words are so important to be able to understand the foundation of what the Lord was telling us to pray for. And the title of the message this weekend is The Provision of Prayer. The Provision of Prayer. And I have two things that I want to tell you about this. So two points, all right? Number one, God wants us to pray for natural provision. God wants us. He wants us to pray for natural provision. It's not wrong to pray for a, a home in a good school district for your children. It's not wrong to pray for a job that would be a blessing to you and your family that you could also be a blessing to others. It's not wrong to pray for a car that doesn't break down every week. It's not wrong to pray for natural provision. And many times in the church, we're told that that's wrong or that that's selfish. It is not selfish. And the reason we know that it's not selfish is because when the disciples said, teach us to pray, Jesus said, in this manner, this is the way I want you to pray. I want you to ask the Father for daily bread. I want you to ask him. I want you to notice this, this uh, sentence begins with the word give. Give us this day our daily bread. Give. The reason why is because God is a giver. He likes to provide for his children. He is a provider. When he revealed himself through his names in the Old Testament, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Shalom. Okay, the first name he revealed himself through was Jehovah Jireh the Lord who provides. God wants to provide for us and we want to. It's not only okay to pray for provision, it's the way Jesus taught us to pray. And he says this, give us this day our daily bread, our daily bread. Most theologians believe that this in the Lord's Prayer is referencing, and I believe this as well, Exodus 16. When God provided daily bread, for the children of Israel for 40 years. So Exodus chapter 16, I asked you to turn there, look at verse 4. Exodus 16 verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day. Just notice the word day. All right, we'll come back to that. That I may test them. And I'm going, we're going to talk about that, that Daily provision is a test. It's a way God tests us. Whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much 
as they gather daily. That's because they weren't supposed to work on the seventh day, which was the Sabbath. Now, it says day, and then it ends with daily. It uses these words, day and daily. Remember verse 11 in Matthew 6, give us this day our daily bread. We just saw those two words as he talked about the daily bread from heaven. Now, I have to be honest with you, okay, as I was going over this verse over and over in my mind, trying to allow the Lord to speak to me about it, give us this day our daily bread, give us this day our daily bread, thinking about it, praying about it, getting ready to be able to to have that time where I'd study about it, but I was thinking, and now here's my thought, it was not a spiritual thought, this is more of a grammarian thinking, okay? Here's what I thought, give us this day, our daily bread. Okay, here was, I I thought, that's redundant. Now I know that's not spiritual, but that's what I thought, I thought that's that's redundant. Why, Why doesn't it say, give us this day our bread? Or, give us our daily bread. But why does he say, give us this day our daily bread? And here's what I really believe. I really believe God did this on purpose. He wanted the children of Israel to depend on him to provide every day. He wants us to depend on him to provide. And by the way, if we don't learn to, to depend on God for God's provision, we will begin to look for provision from some other source. And when you look for provision from some other source, whether it's a person or even our government, you're going to be disappointed. We are to look to God and God only for our provision. And that's why God created this way. Our daily bread, think about this, maybe you've never thought about this before, but God designed us He created us. God designed us to eat daily, four or five or six times a day. (laughs) I'm just joking. God designed us to eat daily. Now, listen, God designed us. God created the digestive system, right? Why didn't he design us to eat monthly? I mean, there are some ladies with with newborns that would love if babies would eat monthly, (laughs) rather than every two hours all night long, you know. God designed, why did God do that? Listen, he did it to remind us that we are to depend on him daily. You know, it says, give us this day our daily bread. Let me tell you what most Americans would rather pray. Give us our annual bread. That way I won't have to think about it for another year. I'll just know I'm taken care of. No, God created us to be dependent upon him. But I think there's a higher reason why he did it. I think he did it because he doesn't want to talk to us annually or monthly. He wants to talk to us every day. He simply wants to have a relationship with his children. You know, you don't want to see your children or your grandchildren monthly or annually. You want to see them on a regular basis. God wants to see and talk to his children every day. So daily bread represents that every day we say, God, we're going to trust you for our provision for today. Let's keep going in Exodus 16. Uh, Look at verse 15. It says, so when the children of Israel saw it, it was this seed scattered on the ground, if you read verses uh, 13 and 14 before, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Now, uh, if you'll look at me just for a moment, I'm going to tell you something you might not know. The word manna means, what is it? That's what it means in the Hebrew. That that is the word. I know if you ask most, most believers, if you ask them, if they haven't studied this for some group or teaching or something that they've done, if you said, what does manna mean? The common answer you'll get is bread. But that's not what it means. It means, what is it? That's what they, and it says the children of Israel named it. God didn't didn't name it manna. He said, I'm going to give you bread. And they went out and they saw it, and it was seed. By the way, listen, the seed had to be gathered and prepared. Please, please, Please hear me. This is very important. God provides the bread, but the bread, we still have to work. We still have to do our part. It's the same way today. God provides it, but we have to work hard. And God blesses hard work. So they said, what is it? Now, again, that's what they call it. They call it, this is the Hebrew word man. It means, what is it? What is it? I don't know. If you, just think about this. You know, it's like, uh, 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 Johnny, go, go out and gather the whatever that stuff is out there. The what is it? Okay, so let's keep going. For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread 
which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. I don't know if you've ever seen this part or not. One omer, which is simply a measurement, for each person, according to the number of persons, let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it by omers, he who gathered much had nothing left over. And he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. Okay, it's very simple to, to think about. If a, uh, a couple had just gotten married and they didn't have any children, there were only two in the household, then uh, they gathered two omers. If, if a, a, a family had been married for a while and they had eight children and with the two parents, then they gathered ten omers. If uh, many times it was the case that the uh, grandchildren, the family lived together, uh, and so now you've got grandparents and you've got children and you've got grandchildren, and let's say the whole clan was, was uh, 18 or 20, then they gathered 18 to 20 omers. You see what I'm saying? They gathered one omer per person. But here's what he said. The ones that gathered much, they didn't have anything left over. Worked out perfectly. The ones that gathered little had no lack. In other words, God provided exactly what each person needed. Now, here's what I want to say about that. We are to pray for our daily need. If you have a family of five, you pray for the needs for a family of five. If you have three children, you pray for the need for those three children. Not just, just, just bread or food, but you pray for their need. That's what the bread represents. You pray for their medical needs to be met for each child. You, if you have a child that is going through a difficulty with some medical issue, every day you're going to pray for that need for the bread from heaven to meet that need. You pray for the educational needs for each child to be met. You pray for the spiritual needs for each child to be met. If you have a child that's going through a difficulty, you're praying for the bread from heaven for that child for that day. But here's something many people don't think about. What if you're a small business owner? What if, what if you own a business? Now, now maybe you have 15 or 20 employees, and they have wives or spouses or husbands and children as well. Now you're praying for the bread for your business to provide for each one of those that work for you. Are you following me? And this is what we do when we pray. We pray not just for daily bread for our own family, but we pray for daily bread in whatever occupation God's called us to serve in. And if you're a business owner, then you're providing for others as well. So this is what God is saying. You pray for your need, and I will meet your need. Provision comes from God. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Now, I believe that Jesus was referencing manna in Exodus 16. Many theologians believe he was also referencing a proverb that was very well known in Hebrew thought. The proverb is pro in Proverbs 30, but Proverbs 30 and 31 were not written by Solomon. Some people think all of Proverbs was written by Solomon, but, but Proverbs 30 was written by Agur, A-G-U-R. And uh, so let me just read, this is the, what Agur said in Proverbs 30, verse 8. Give me, notice it begins with the word give, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Remember, with the daily manna, there was an allotment for each person. And depending on your needs, the allotment was more or less, depending on your need, all right? This begins, the, the Lord's Prayer, verse 11 says, 
give us our daily bread, this day our daily bread. Here he says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Now, why would he say that? Because it's the same thing as daily bread. He said, I understand I need to be dependent upon God. And, and, and if, if I have too much, he says, also in the passage, I didn't go on to read it, then, then uh, if I have too much, I might grow stingy. If I don't have enough, I might steal. I might be tempted to do that. Okay, think about this now. Um, he says, give me neither prosperity nor poverty, riches nor poverty. Okay, do you realize that in the body of Christ today, these two extremes are being preached most of the time? Some preach a prosperity gospel. Some preach a poverty gospel. Jesus preached a provision gospel. The Father wants to provide for your needs, but he wants you to ask him. When we ask God to provide our needs, and when we do it daily, it keeps us dependent upon God and upon his work and his grace in our lives. Um, you probably heard about the little boy that prayed for uh, a little brother. He first came to his father and he said, Dad, I want a little brother. And his dad said, well, you ought, to, you ought to pray and ask God for a little brother. So he prayed for a month and nothing happened. And then he prayed for two months and nothing happened. Then he prayed for three months and nothing happened, so he stopped praying. A few months later, his dad took him to the hospital and he said, son, I want to show you something. He pulled back this curtain and there was a baby brother. And then he pulled the curtain back a little farther and there was another baby brother. And he pulled the curtain back a little farther, and there was another baby brother. And he said, now, aren't you glad you prayed? And the son said, yes, aren't you glad I stopped after three months? <laughs> God wants to provide. All right, here's number two. God wants us to pray for spiritual provision. God wants us to pray for spiritual provision. Now, there, there's been a lot of debate in the church, as far as I can see, for about 1,700 years as to whether verse 11 of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, was referring to natural provision or spiritual provision. I believe it's both. And this is the reason I believe it's both. I believe God does want to provide for us naturally because we have so many other references to God providing our physical and natural needs. But he uses the word bread, not food. This is why I think it has a spiritual parallel as well, because bread has a spiritual meaning in Scripture. Uh, you know, in, in Mark 7, Jesus is talking to a woman, and he calls freedom from bondage the children's bread. In other words, if you're a child of the king, you can get free from bondage. All through Scripture, we see that bread has a spiritual meaning. Uh, we'll get to Deuteronomy 8 in a moment. In John 6, verse 31, these are the people that he just fed the 5,000, you remember? And they're talking to him, and they said, Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. He did give bread, but he didn't give the bread. Here's the spiritual meaning. But my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. <laughs> Here's the thing. It, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing that so many times they just didn't get it. He said, my Father gives the true bread. It is he who comes down and gives life to the world. Now, I didn't go on and read it, but right after that, they said, give us this bread. He said, I am the bread. Idiots, you know, I'm mean, just, you know, just. In the Greek, it's idioto. Idioto. So, no, he didn't say idiots. But I just wonder if he felt that way sometime. I'm the bread. So, we know bread has a spiritual meaning. Jesus clarifies his spiritual meaning when he's being tempted. Matthew 4, verse 4. He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, this is a quote from Deuteronomy 8. So, if you, if you uh, put a marker there, look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, the whole chapter would be wonderful to read in your quiet time this week. If you're looking for some quiet time material, read Deuteronomy 8 this week, all right? But let me show you verse 3. It says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, 
that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. That's what Jesus quoted. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Okay. Would it be all right if when we pray for daily bread, that it's just not natural, but it's spiritual as well? <laughs> Lord, would you give me the word that proceeds from your mouth for today? J just think about this. Do you have a situation in your life right now, maybe in your health, maybe in your finances, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your family, maybe with one of your children, do you have a situation in your life right now that it would be good if you got a word from God every day? I think that's what he's saying. He said, give us this day our daily bread. God provided manna every day, and Jesus said, listen, that was natural, but there's spiritual food. They're spiritual bread. You can ask me for a word from God every day. And some of you might think, well, I just don't know how to hear God that way. Well, here's a word from God right here. Simply read this every day. When I was growing up in our kitchen, my mother had a, a little, some of you will remember this, a little ceramic loaf. Uh, it looked like a loaf of bread, but it was a little ceramic thing. Had these cards in it, said our daily bread. How many of you remember that? And there was a scripture on the cards. Okay, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. What it was saying was, is God not only wants to provide bread for me to eat, he wants to provide a word from his mouth every day for me. God wants to speak to me. But here's what the Lord's Prayer is telling us. Ask. Remember I told you last week, it begins with praise, it ends with praise, and the whole middle is petition, which means request or ask. God wants you to ask for natural provision and spiritual provision. There was a time when I was um, looking at a passage of Scripture and I couldn't figure it out. I did everything I could to figure it out. I, I worked about three hours on this. I read commentaries. I cross-referenced it. I, I looked up wor the word. There was a word in the verse. I looked it up, all these other places in the Bible. Three hours. And I, 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 and I still didn't have a clue what the Scripture was talking about. And I just kind of <sighs> sat back in my chair like that. It was like the Lord all of a sudden was just standing there in my office, and you know, the Lord likes to joke around with me. I don't know why, but he just likes to do things like this. And so he said to me, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, I'm trying to figure out what this verse means with no help from you, I might add. <laughs> and he said to me, do you think I know what it means? And I said, well, of course, Lord, you know what it means. And then he said to me, then why don't you just ask? Why don't you just ask? And when I said, okay, what does it mean? And, and just like that. Now, God used my time of study, but here's my point. I hadn't asked. I'd studied, I'd worked, I'd done all the things that I thought to do, and we are to do, but we're also to ask. And when we ask, God provides spiritual provision. Um, now, let me, let me say something here where there's an old saying that, you know, Pastor, you've quit preaching and gone to meddling, okay? I'm going to go to meddling for a minute. But let me just say that I'm talking to me too. Matter of fact, I'm talking to me first, all right? Matter of fact, every week when I preach, I'm preaching to me and you eavesdrop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm preaching to me in this because I've, I've, I've suffered through this through many times as well. I've done the same thing. When we have difficulty sleeping at night, in my opinion, the primary reason that we can't sleep is because we are worried whether there will be manna on the ground when we get up in the morning for our need. I want to say that again. Whether it's a financial need or a family need, but there's something that we're worrying about and we're stressed about. And we need to know that when we get up the next day, God's mercies are new every morning. God's manna will be on the ground for that day. You know, right after the Lord's Prayer, you know what Jesus goes into? Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to put on. Don't worry about these things. For the Lord knows he knows that you have a need, and if he's faithful to take care of the flowers and he's faithful to take care of the birds, he'll be faithful to take care of you. He'll take care of you every day.
Don't worry about these things. In The God I Never Knew, Robert Morris explains that the Holy Spirit's chief desire is for a relationship with you to offer the encouragement and guidance of a trusted friend. I want you to understand that all of these gifts, all of God's gifts, have to do with ministering to people, and they have to do with encouraging people. It's time to experience the Holy Spirit in a fresh, new way to meet the God you may have never known. You have someone living inside of you who knows everything about everything. And he has committed himself to be your teacher and to lead you into all truth. You realize that daily manna is a test. You realize that, don't you? It's the same way tithing is a test. It's the same thing. Do you believe that if you give the first 10% to God, that the other 90% that's blessed will go farther than 100% that's cursed? It's, 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 it, it is a, a test. As a matter of fact, it's, tithing is the only place in the Bible God says you can test it. It's the only place in the Bible where God says you can test it. I've told you many times, I've told you many, many times, you tithe for one year, and if you're not fully satisfied at the end of that year, I'll give you your money back. Because I have the Word of God standing behind me. I have God's Word. And please, the only reason I ever say things like this is because I want you to walk in God's provision. And natural provision parallels spiritual provision. Jesus even said himself, well, if you can't trust me with money, how could I trust you with true riches? This was a test for Israel. Here's what he said in Deuteronomy 8. The reason I provided daily manna for you was a test. And you know what the two tests were? Here was one test. And, the, and Israel failed, by the way. They failed miserably. Okay, they failed miserably. Here was one test, that they wouldn't gather too much every day. Because here's what they would do. they think, well, there might not be enough for tomorrow, so I'm going to gather more. Proverbs talks about the man who withholds more than is right, and it tends to poverty. Okay, so there are people who withhold. Here's what Israel did. When they gathered too much, it rotted the next day. It, it had worms the next day. Because God didn't want them to trust him for two days. He wanted them to trust him for one day. Just today. Trust me that there will be tomorrow. Then here's the other way that they, they failed at the test. On the sixth day, he said, I'll provide enough for two days. So they brought it in. They prepared it. But they thought, well, it might have worms like it did. So they would actually go out and look for it on the seventh day. But there was none the seventh day. And God said to Moses, how long? How long will these people test me like this? How long will they not obey my word? We do the exact same thing. Instead of giving and being generous with our finances, we hold on to it because, you know, God may not provide tomorrow. And let me tell you what happened. Listen, if you hold on to more than you should, it'll rot. It'll rot. I'm not saying that we shouldn't save and be diligent. I, I, we should do that. I'm simply saying that we don't hoard. We don't hold on to more than what is right. And then secondly, uh, they, went and they, they went out to work on the Sabbath. If you go out and work, if you work seven days a week thinking you can make more than six days a week, you'll rot. Can I say that again? <laughs> if you don't rest one day a week and trust God that he can provide, if you'll only work six days a week, you'll be the one that rots. You'll wear out. Uh, some of you know that before I was pastor here, I was an associate pastor, Shady Grove with Pastor Olin. Before that, I was a traveling evangelist. I wasn't on salary at any church. And so I was just a traveling evangelist, and I would travel around, and I would speak, and they would give love offerings, and that's the way, that was our, that's how our income came. And um, one summer, as we, during the spring, as I'm booking the summer and the fall, I'm noticing nobody's calling about the summer. No one was calling about it. And I start noticing I have uh, speaking engagements till the end of May, and I have speaking engagements starting back up in September, but June, July, and August, I had no speaking engagements. And so I said, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? Now, there were times when I would uh, build fences. There was a guy in our church that built fences, and so I would go help him. I always provided for my family. I always did that. Also, can I say something else? I always had savings. 
unless God said it at certain times, and it was the exception, not the rule, to give everything away. There were times we gave everything away, but we immediately started building our savings back up. So when I did some of these things, when I talk about living, God, living by faith, I'm not talking about uh, putting your family in jeopardy. I'm not talking about that at all. So where this summer, the summer comes, we do have some savings, you know, but I, I'm thinking, well, God, what do you want me to do? Because I, I don't want to live on that, you know, I want to provide for my family. Here's what the Lord said to me. He said, I want you to work for me this summer. And I thought, you know, I'm in the ministry. I kind of thought I was working for you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, I want you to work for me from 8 to 5. I will never forget this summer. This is one of the best summers of my life. He said, 8 in the morning, I want you to go in this room, and I want you to pray and get in the Word until noon. At noon, you come out and have lunch with Debbie until 1. At 1 o'clock, you go back in the room until 5, and then you come spend the evenings with your family. From 8 to 5, you spend with me. And then he said this, and I'll provide. So I did. For that whole summer, I didn't speak anywhere. I spent 8 to 5 every day, Monday through Friday, with the Lord and in his Word. One evening, I was driving to the post office box, and we had a bill that was due. And um, I was complaining, uh, pardon me, praying. I was praying. <clears throat> that's, that's the Christian word for complaining. And I was saying, Lord, I'm doing what you told me to do, and you said you'd provide, and I don't understand, and da, 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 da. I was, you know, doing this. And the Lord said to me, did you ask me today for your daily bread? I'll never forget that. Did you ask me today, did you pray today for your daily bread? I said, no, Lord, uh, give, us, give me today the, my daily bread. I got to the post office box. There was a check there that was just enough for our tithe, which our tithe, many of you know, is a double tithe, 20%. So it was enough for that plus to pay the bill and a little bit left over. And I remember I, I just kind of, wow, that's amazing. And I start driving away, and the Lord said, hey, <laughs> just a few minutes ago, you were chewing me out about this. <laughs> and I was like, yes, Lord, th thank you for doing a miracle. He said, yeah, it is a bigger miracle than you think. He said, first of all, this couple that sent this check, they, they you know, you, they, they put this sweet letter. I'd been in their city like two years before and preached a crusade, and their kids had gotten saved, and they were talking about how their kids, their lives had been changed. And then they talked about this bonus they received, and that the Lord spoke to them to send me a, an offering from that bonus. And the Lord said to me, son, I, I, I started working on this. You prayed today, but I was already working on it. I, I, I prepared the bonus for them. Then I put it on their hearts to send it. This was several weeks ago. Then I worked it to where it got to you exactly this day. And I had to get it to you through the United States Postal Service. <laughs> this was a miracle, son. And I was reminded of the Scripture before you ask. I will answer. But we need to ask. Ask God for natural provision. It's not wrong to ask him. He wants you to. And ask God for spiritual provision. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to just take a moment and ask the Lord, Lord, what are you saying to me through this message? Just take a moment and say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? And we want to pray for you. No matter what you're going through, and all of us go through difficulties, and all of us need prayer. Jesus said, where two or three of you will gather in my name, I'm, in, I'm there in the midst. So he's here. He, he goes on to say, if two of you will agree or pray, agree in agreement about anything, I will do it. So that's why we pray together. So if you have a, a need and you need prayer, no matter which campus you're attending, whether you're uh, South Lake or Frisco or North Fort Worth or, or North Richmond Hills, or if you're in an overflow room, or if you're in the second level at the South Lake campus, we have leaders who want to pray for you that will be close by where you can get to them. Our leaders will be at the front of the room at the second level at South Lake. They're by every exit. So in just a moment, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stand. We're going to have one more worship song. During that worship song, if you need prayer for any reason, and please don't be embarrassed to ever ask for prayer, because we all need prayer. We all need prayer. 
And, and maybe you're not even, you say, well, I'm not a member of Gateway Church. You don't have to be a member to, to ask for prayer. We want to pray for you. And maybe you're a leader and you say, well, I'm in leadership here. Well, you, you need to be an example then and come for prayer because every person needs prayer. We all need prayer. We never get too mature to not need prayer. So if you need prayer in any area of your life, no matter which campus you're attending, what, in just a moment when we stand up, as we worship, you just step out, come to one of the leaders at the front, and let us pray for you, all right? Holy Spirit, I pray you'll draw every person at every campus that has any need for prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I was 19 years old when I gave my life to the Lord and everything changed. I didn't have any desire to go back to that old life. I wanted to walk with the Lord and learn more about Him. And some people helped me to learn the Bible and to learn how to pray and to learn about my new life in Christ. And that's what we want to do for you. I am so excited that you've given your life to the Lord. He's forgiven all of your sins and you're on your way to heaven. But we need to learn some things now about the Bible, about prayer, about some basics of the Christian life so that you can be victorious and live for the Lord like I know you want to. So we've designed a class called Fresh Start. And I want to encourage you to sign up for this class because we want to help you grow in your walk with the Lord now. I love you and I'm so proud of you. We invite you to join us each week on The Blessed Life with Pastor Robert Morse. Experience dynamic Bible-based teaching. Enjoy freedom from the inspiring worship of the Gateway Worship Team. It's a time to grow, be encouraged, and learn how to live the blessed life. The Blessed Life with Gateway Church's Robert Morris.